Python, a guiding light in a labyrinth of languages. I love playing. I like Lego bricks. I like mathematical games. I like Python. I want to convince you in the next few minutes that Python is worth learning. So could there possibly be a better example than a maze solver? So in just a few minutes, we'll try to write a program in Python capable of solving an ASCII maze. I've already prepared one, as we can see from this file in my editor. A simple maze with a bunch of cells. The program will try to find a path from cell S, the starting position, to cell E for end. This program obviously doesn't do a thing. If we try to execute it, you'll see that it has no output. Let's start by printing our maze to see what we get from executing the program. Let's see the output, and here it is, our ASCII maze. Okay, at this point we can define the different cell types in our maze. Let's start by defining a path cell, then we need to define the starting cell and the exit cell. Next, we have to define a character that will identify cells that have already been explored by the maze solver, and in the end, a character that marks a path as the solution of our maze solver the solution that will bring us from start to end. So let's define five variables, path, start, exit, visited, solution. And let's assign five characters to these variables. So an available path is marked with a blank, start is an S, the exit is E, a visited spot is shown as a dot, while lowercase o is for a cell that's part of the solution. Let's print some of these variables to check that they have the right values. Let's print path, exit, and solution. Perfect. Obviously we don't see path because it's blank, but we rightly see e and o. Now we can define the class that will hold our maze, in which we'll define the method that solves the maze as well. I hope we can do it. Let's begin by defining the class. Our ASCII maze is its initialization value. Let's define a constructor. that will take as its first and only parameter our maze, that is the string which corresponds to the maze. But first I want to clean a bit by removing those print instructions that we don't need anymore, those which printed the maze and the cell types. Let's assign our maze to a maze variable by using the strings method split lines, which as the name implies, splits a string into separate values on each new line. Now let's try to print the maze by creating wrapper, which returns a string representation of the object itself. So now we have to do the inverse operation. We need to merge our strings in order to print them in a friendly way for people who watch the program's execution. So let's use the method join, which joins all the elements passed in as parameters. And let's test a bit. We can try to print the class. Let's define an instance and then print it. This instruction is executed only when the program is run by the interpreter at the command line, not when it's just imported as a library. So let's define an instance of the maze class to which we pass in the variable ASCII maze, and we try to print the object. Good, it worked. So now we have a class that has a list of lines which represent our maze. 
and we have a method to display the maze in a human-friendly way. Let's take the next step. We need a matrix to handle the maze more easily. Because simple lines aren't enough, we need to split every line into its own cells. In order to do so, we can use a syntax that allows us to transform a string into a list of characters. The syntax is list row for each row that's in the maze. This construct is called a list comprehension. So in a single line, what we do is take the string and split it into multiple lines, then for each line, split it into its characters. By doing so, the variable self.maze is a matrix composed of many lines, and every line is composed of as many characters as there are in the maze. Now, however, the method that represents the maze won't work anymore because join expects to work on a sequence of characters, not a list. In fact, it doesn't work. We need to change the way we represent our maze. How? Simply by merging all the characters that are in all the lines. So let's again use the join method on all row elements of our maze. This should be just good enough. Let's try, and it works. Now we have a maze that's a bit more mathematical. Because it's composed of the individual characters rather than multiple strings or a single string, but rather a matrix where every element is a maze cell. Now we need to check which cells of the maze are the start and exit cell. How do we look for the start cell? by iterating over every line of the maze. And for every line, we count how many elements are equal to the start cell character. Obviously, there will be only one line with element S. So in a single step, we can iterate through the maze and look for the line which contains the start cell S. Then with a row count, we can count all the elements of a row which contain the start cell for every single row. Then when we have this list, we can grab the element that contains value one because all other elements will be set to zero. Now let's search within this line, which is the position where S is located. So once we find the line that contains S, let's look for the S position within this line. We can accomplish this by using the method index on the list, which returns the position of a certain character within the list itself. Okay, we have a maze variable that contains the matrix which represents the maze itself. And let's try to print the coordinates of the starting position to check the value. Let's see, they should be 9 and 0, because it should be at the ninth row, first column, index 0. Good, 9 and 0. So the maze is well represented, and we know where to start. How to get out of it is a bit more complicated. But let's have our class do the job. Let's define a method named solve that starts exploring the maze starting from S, whose location we know thanks to start X and start Y. Our method solve will be a recursive method that will start exploring the maze recursively, moving in all possible directions. How will it find a solution? Well, let's start by considering the maze's starting position, that is, from coordinate x and y. Because solve is recursive, we need to do it in such a way that at the beginning, our position variables are equal to the start position. Initially, we use none as the default value for both x and y, 